So how heavy do you have to lift for muscle growth? Now that might seem like a pretty simple question. After all, it's only 10 words, but the answer is almost as always not so simple. So does this mean the intensity you should be lifting at? And by intensity, I don't mean rawr. I mean the percentage of one rep max. In other words, what rep range should you be targeting? That's one interpretation of this. However, you could also interpret this as, do I need to progressively overload and lift heavier over time? You could also think of this as, how strong do I need to get to look the way I want? Should I optimize my technique in order to lift heavier? Or are heavier lifts better? And should I focus on the lifts that allow me to lift the most amount of weight? So which question am I gonna answer in this video? Fuck it, you know, you know what it is. I'm gonna answer all of them. So let's start at the start. What rep range or intensity should I be lifting at? Now these two things are kind of the same variable in a lot of ways because the higher the reps, the lighter you will have to go. And the lower the reps, the heavier you can go. And the typical answer is, 17. 17? 17. 5 to 30 reps. Now, I don't think this is a bad recommendation because under 5 and over 30 both have some issues. Over 30, for a lot of people, cardio becomes a limiting factor, especially for lower body compounds. If you're doing sets of 40 on squats, yeah, breathing very well might be the limiting factor. Also, even with moderate reps, most people aren't going as close to failure as they probably should to maximize muscle growth. But when you're trying to do sets of 35, sets of 40, the burn and the sensation is so great that a lot of people simply won't push those sets close to failure at all. And there's actually evidence that the higher the reps and the lower the weight, the more proximity to failure matters. So it matters more, but it's also harder to do. Furthermore, a lot of people find that these higher rep sets get them more sore. I think you'll adapt to this in the moderate to long term, but in the short term, it might be a consideration. Now, when you go heavy, when you go under five reps, there are other issues. A lot of people find that these are actually tougher on the joints. When they go heavy, they get beat up elbows, knees, lower back, shoulders, whatever. And when they go a little bit lighter, they don't really seem to have as many issues you're also getting fewer reps per set. And I think a set of five and a set of 10 and a set of 15 are gonna be roughly equal. But when you're only doing like doubles or triples or singles, you're probably gonna need more sets to make up for so few reps per set. Furthermore, I found that the heavier you go, the more technical the movement becomes. Also, you're gonna need more warm up. So if you're going 90% of one rep max, 95%, the margin of error is smaller and it just takes longer to get to those weights. However, I don't think it's all bad, and I think there are some fairly minor benefits that you might get from going above 30 or below 5. Above 30, it's great for work capacity, gets you a nice pump. I don't know how much it's going to contribute to growth, but it feels good. And um, yeah, it's a nice way to sort of finish off a session. And going below 5 reps, I found that it can actually help to drive progression by getting in those touches with the heavier weight. I might not do this on some movements. I don't think it's really worth maxing out on a preacher curl. It doesn't really make sense. But if you hit a top single or a top double or a top triple on squats before you're working weights, that might make the working weights, maybe a set of eight, set of 10, set of 12, feel even lighter, move better, and help your progression and your performance. And if it does that, in my book, it's probably a win and it might be worth going up heavier, hitting something heavy and then dropping back down for your drop off sets, back down sets, working sets, whatever you want to call it. Question two, do I need to progressively overload and get stronger over time? The short answer is yes, but not like a power lifter. By the way, the B-roll is actually, I'm lifting with Camp Ferguson, AKA the Dorito deadlifter. I probably shouldn't need to explain that, but Dorito is shaped like this. And when you deadlift, you become shaped like like this. And he is a power lifter, a very good one, and he is focused on progressing like a power lifter. So he is targeting a one rep max and all of his training is focused around that. But if you're more interested in hypertrophy, yes, you do need to get stronger, but progression might be slower, your volume might be slightly higher, you're more focused on proximity to failure, and progression is sort of the result of the training rather than the goal. By the way, this video is sponsored by, yeah, you guessed it, you smart cookie, Boost Camp. This is hands down 
the best way to track your training. I've been using it for a while now, really enjoying it, super easy to use. If you train heavy, if you train moderate, if you train light, some other percentage, it doesn't matter. Either way, you need to track your training. Don't go to the gym guessing what you did last week because I guarantee your ass will forget unless you're some kind of weird hypertrophy, bustle, building, remembering, savant person, but that's probably not you because I need to track things. And if you don't track things, your progress will probably not be where it needs to be. So definitely check out Boost Camp, have it at your fingertips, be able to track your training. And once again, thank you to Boost Camp for sponsoring this video. Third question is, how strong do I need to get to look the way I want? And uh, the short answer is, I have no fucking idea. It's going to be different for every single person. Strength standards are just a starting point. Yeah, if you want a big chest, having a three-plate bench is a decent indicator. But if you're lifting in a certain way, if you're really optimizing your setup, again, if you're training for a one rep max, you might hit a certain number and kind of be unhappy with the way you look, especially if you're very beneficially leveraged for that lift. And so I was talking to Cam about powerlifting training, and a lot of it is just practice, 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 dialing in the technique, greasing the groove, not going to failure, but just getting in more sets and focusing on these three particular lifts. And that is quite different to how a typical bodybuilder is going to train, where the lift is just a way to stimulate the muscle. You also need to correlate the strength and the size for each area and each lift appropriately. I get messages from people who are like, I powerlifting total this much weight and my arms are still small. Well, powerlifting isn't really a great way to target your arms. Cam still has pretty fucking big arms, but I think they used to be bigger. He used to have 19 inch arms naturally, uh, and that's because he trained them directly. Now he doesn't train them directly as much because he's focused on other goals. And that ties into question four. Should I optimize my technique to go heavier, to lift more weight? Well, if you're a power lifter, yeah, absolutely. That's the whole point of the sport. It's to lift the most weight, right? Pretty simple. I just spat on my phone. And if you look at how a lot of bodybuilders train, they are trying to do movements that are disadvantaged, that allow them to get more out of less weight. Shout out Alex Leonidas. So this might be something like a Larson press where your feet are up, your back is relatively flat, and you're not sort of wriggling into place in order to optimize your leverages. Maybe you're doing a deficit deadlift. Maybe you're doing what Bald Omniman does, and when he's RDLing, he's pushing the weight out further in order to get worse leverages. There are a lot of ways to get more out of less weight. Pretty much any lift you can make harder if you go out of your way to do it. You just might have to fight your instinct to do that. So when I'm doing squats, my knees are forward, I'm trying to stay upright, I'm going down, pausing at the bottom, etc., because that allows me to get more out of less weight and target the muscle more effectively. And I've had times where I kind of had to reset my form a little bit, where I was moving a little bit faster, I was a little bit looser, a little bit sloppier, etc. Typical Tuesday night out, right? And I realized that maybe I hadn't actually progressed. I had either just optimized my technique or cheated more or done something where I hadn't actually grown the muscle, the prime mover that I wanted to target. And I'm like, oh, shit. I know I had to drop the weight. I had to humble myself. I had to drop the ego, etc. And a lot of people need to do that. And this ties into question number five. Good job whoever scripted this out. Nice work, whoever that was. Nice flow to this video. Are heavier lifts better? So I've heard this before. Oh, I can go heavier on this lift, therefore it's going to build more muscle. Well, not necessarily. I think that in a lot of cases, it's kind of the opposite. Getting more out of less weight, not having to go as heavy, is often a good thing, particularly as you get stronger. Powerlifting is hard as shit. I think it is... It is difficult because you have to go heavy because intensity, weight on the bar, is what drives progression. And so a lot of powerlifting training is kind of revolving around that need to go heavy. And so Cam here is doing a low bar squat because that allows him to put himself in a position and give himself the leverages to lift heavier. But I'm sure that if he just wanted maximum quad growth, he probably wouldn't be doing this lift because it is unnecessarily taxing, and he's only doing it because it allows him to get to his goals. And this is part of the reason why most powerlifters, pretty much all of them, 
do accessory movements, often with more range of motion and that are more challenging for a given weight. This is because the power lifts themselves, done in a hyper-optimized way, might not actually be great for muscle growth. I'm not saying they're terrible, but certainly they leave a lot to be desired in some cases. And in some ways, the better you are at powerlifting and the more hyper-optimized and dialed in your setup is, the worse it is for muscle growth. So it's almost like the irony that the better you get at it, the worse it is for muscle growth. And ultimately, muscle growth is still very important for powerlifting. And so, yeah, accessories. So this video is not a knock on power building and it's certainly not a knock on powerlifting. You just have to realize that there are always trade-offs. There are never solutions. There are only just pluses and minuses from doing various things in your training. And so assess exactly what you want and then plan your training intelligently around those goals. So I will link the Dorito deadlifter in the description, his Instagram. He, uh, he just hit a 600 pound squat, which, yeah, that's a fucking awesome lift. If that doesn't get you fired up, I don't know what will. You're dead inside. Good job. And if you want to learn more about the finer points of hypertrophy training, you can check out my books. They will give you all the information you need to set your training on the right path. If you've hit a plateau, definitely grab them. If you haven't hit a plateau, just wait, because you will eventually, and then the books will be very, very helpful indeed. Thank you so much for the support, and thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.